Hey everybody, I'm Romy. I'm Mark. That's Mark. <laughs> and that's saying. Laura. <laughs> Laura Stone is actually visiting with us. Uh, she's traveling through, so she came to um, visit us for a few days, so we're pretty excited about that. She's actually doing an online Facebook class next to us, so we're having fun. Um, I have a couple of things I want to talk about tonight, so you guys get me. So, but I also wanted to do a couple of just shares with you guys. So, who would like to share, introduce yourself, and talk a little bit about how you got started with DoTerra? I mean, just a real kind of elevator speech kind of thing. Go, Iris. Hi, Romy and Mark. Hi. I'm Iris Doolittle. I'm a 32-year stroke survivor, and I got introduced to doTERRA in 2014. In July, I was having, uh, I was up in the middle of the night uh, quite often with, um, can we talk non-compliantly? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> uh, with menopause and complaining. And my husband's cousin, who is Kai Slaymaker, said, oh, you should try doTERRA lavender. So I tried it. In two weeks, I was hooked. Um, by September, I was taking, or maybe October, taking LLV. And <laughs> in January, I knew... I had to share. And so it's been a ride since. Awesome. And we're really, really glad to have you with us. Iris I'm is glad. awesome. If yeah, you I'm glad to be here. Yeah, she blogs and um, she reaches out to um, stroke survivors and thrivers. And she is just an inspiration. It's She's really somebody amazing to follow just just because she's awesome. So that's my quip for you. <laughs> Who else? Deb, I would love to hear from you. You're muted. Uh, I was hoping you wouldn't zoom in on me. <laughs> yeah, you knew it was coming. <laughs> well, I'm new to doTERRA, and um, Trish uh, is the one person who introduced me to it. And it was after seeing the results of John's hand. He was severely burnt and um, in June. And in July, he was in his cast still. Mm -hmm. And we met up with them in September, and he didn't have his cast on. And I'm like, oh, John, how is your hand? And he showed me both his hands, and he's like, well, which one would you like to look at? And I could not believe it. And I saw it, and I drove over to her place the next day, and that was it. And I love the products. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we're excited to have you with us. Really, really excited to have you with us. And hopefully you'll come to the river this winter for a little bit. That would be oh, you would try to twist my arm to come. <laughs> uh -huh. That would be fantastic. You have to just come out of the tundra for a little bit. <laughs> my daughter's coming home in a few days, so. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Thank that's you. Good. It would be nice to meet. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's always fun to, um, to talk to people that that are just getting started. Um, and especially when that excitement is, that newness and that excitement and to be able to hear really what is that, that light bulb moment for people. And it, that, that never gets old for me. It's, I, I mean, I get messages regularly about how the oils are helping people. And, and that's, that's just something that's really cool for me, so. I, I encourage you all to be sharing back and forth just just because because it's pretty neat 
to um, to hear people's stories in that way. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the cafe. Have you all um, seen the announcement about the cafe? Yes, no, okay. So just to reiterate a little bit, um, you're welcome to put, if you're talking to someone and um, you're just introducing the oils to them. One of the things that I did in the very beginning is when I first started talking to people, if they, if they especially if they didn't, don't know anything about the oils, it kind of makes your job a little bit easier. I would, I would just say I have, I have a group that is just oil education. It's a, it's a way to be able to get in there and kind of see how uh, people are using the oils. You can ask questions and and all of that. So it's a great place to put the people, your prospects in there. I kind of don't like that word, but for lack of a better word, it's it's a good place to put your new friends in there. And then they can they can kind of learn quietly and and then they reach out to you and you can you can answer their questions and and finish up on what else they need. Um, so does anybody have any questions about how it's all running, how it's how it's gonna go? Any feedback, comments? Must be great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, boom. <laughs> okay, so I have a couple of things that I want to talk about. So the number one thing that came to mind as I was going through my notes, I actually do um, my, my, the way that I do business is I have uh, big books. It's just a, like a journal book. Everything that I do, this is an old one, so I was just going through some old training notes and stuff like that. And so everything that I do goes into um, a notebook. So if it's a training, if it's my to-dos, my daily, my daily activity, daily production, it's all in um, a notebook. So one of the things that popped out when I was going through it is having a spirit of excellence. So everything that we do, we want to have that spirit of excellence. And, and everything that we do, our story, what we say, all of that, um, it just needs to be, be us, authentic, um, the truth. We don't have to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We don't have to exaggerate the truth. We don't have to, sometimes when we start out in our business, we have a hard time. Um, like for me, when I first started off, when people, you know, when, if you're doing the business, somebody will ask, you know, well, how much money do you make? Well, when you're first starting off, we're not making that much money. And um, so that can be kind of a little block in there. So you, so what you want to do, that's where some of the relationships come from, um, come in handy, is that you, you get to share someone else's story. So until you get your own oil story, until you get your own business story, you get to share someone else's story and you want to make sure that it is always it's it's always accurate and it's and it's never too big that it's unbelievable um so we know people we have people in our lives that that we know without a shadow of a doubt make lots and lots of money that is not the story to share right out of the gate so you want to make sure that the story, the amount of, if you're, if you're talking, having a business story, a money story, you want to keep that, um, that, that share down into a more believable level. So when I started Natalie, I asked Natalie how much she made and she told me she was a gold and she made $5,000. That was a really big stretch for me. It was hard for me to to imagine because at that time I just needed to make three thousand dollars to get out of my job but I um, because it was close enough to the amount that I needed uh, it made it so it was believable because I believed her if she would have started right out of the gate saying that she made ten thousand or fifteen or twenty I probably would have thought she was lying and um, it would have made it it would have made it too big and too hard for me to believe and it would have made me struggle 
to really um, believe that I could step in and do something like that. So you know, in those in those smaller numbers, it helps people to to um, to see themselves making that amount of money, and then they get to they get to deal with their own their own blocks and steps as they move forward in that. Does anybody have any questions about that part? Comments? Okay. I don't have like a full on, like we're, I don't, I don't have it full on presentation. So I'm going through bullet point stuff of what I, what is pertinent to me of what is happening. So if you have comments, feel free to interrupt, you know, get in there and say something. Tell you this morning, I'm that you're going to be jumping around a bit. Oh, there's a good possibility. I prayed, so I prayed to give you what you're supposed to have. So, <laughs> so I trust this is going to be good. <laughs> and thank goodness it's recorded, because a lot of times when that happens, then I don't know what I said. <laughs> um, okay, so another good one that I found that I thought was really good is mastering time management. All well, not I'm not going to say all, but I think a lot of people struggle with the time management aspect of it. And so at GoPro, Mike Sims did a presentation about um, mastering time management. And I really enjoy listening to him. He's just really, um, he's just fun to listen to. He's just clear. There's a no negativity. You know, we, in, with us, we talk about no strife, no strife allowed. You just kind of, you just move forward and try and be as positive as possible and look for the good in things. So his his master time management is that you're, it's 78% time peaking and interest. That's your activity. And so you're going to focus specifically on who you want to attract. You be good to everyone and the truth is good enough. So the, the time, the, uh, the time peaking interest, that would be, you know, like if you're doing, if you're social media, if you're doing this with social media, those would be times where you're on purpose out looking for contacts, out looking for, you know, who you can start relationships with, who you can go and follow and just really do some things on purpose to be able to make those contacts with people. So one of the things that I do when, when I'm doing that on social media is that I will, I, I go to their profile page. I look for pictures. I look what's happening in their life. And then I will um, find something that is of interest to me and, um, and try and come up and try and find something that I can relate to and then message them according to what they're talking about. I, I don't do a cold message when it comes to, when it comes to doTERRA. My, my messages and my reach out and my contacts and all of that is total relationship. So that's where it's important to kind of see what's going on in their life before you do that. And you don't have to reach out in a message right away. A lot of times I will like their, their pictures, um, I'll like their comments or I'll comment on their pictures, different things like that. The, the main thing in there is to do something that's going to help them to take notice that you're there. So that way, when you do reach out and they see you in message, then they're not going to think that you're some weird spammer. So you've already got some, some interaction happening there. So, um, 15% is personal development. You want to do 30 to 45 minutes in the morning and then before bed. So personal development in our business is key. If you're not doing personal development, you are going to struggle. I promise. I promise you're going to. So um, some people don't read, do audible. You know, you can do, there's, you, people learn differently. If you, um, if you like to, if you're a visual learner, TED Talks is amazing. Find, find what it is that works for you that's going to inspire you and that's going to motivate you and it's going to help you to move past your blocks. And when you hit a wall, you're going to have something that you're going to be able to reach back on and, and help you to move through that. And you're never immune to blocks and walls, just so you know. It just helps you to, to manage that better. 
I, I mean, I think as we, as we move forward in our business, sometimes, sometimes people think that once you rank up and you get to diamond or the higher ranks, then your, then it, then your blocks are less and less. And I actually think the blocks are bigger sometimes. I think the, I think the money blocks are there. I think there's just different things. If we are, um, if we're complacent about blocks and think that that we are immune, I think we're going to end up getting a big slap down and we're going to be in trouble. So it's just something to be aware of. Whatever your personal development looks like and whatever it work whatever it works for you, just do it. Figure out what's going to work for you and do it. Um, then this it's seven percent administrative that's going to be your emails and like your back office just kind of you know it's you don't want to park there make that really um it's very minimal and zero percent negativity negativity is a disease so we really don't want to we don't want to rest there we don't want to allow it uh, I used to, I told my kids all the time, you can't stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from nesting in your hair. So those thoughts and, and all of that, that's going to, they're going to come. Negativity is going to come. It just depends on how we decide to deal with the negativity. So that's what, uh, that's what I have for time management. So here's the other good stuff that I found. So um, I was actually thinking about talking about this the other day, and then when I opened up my notes, it was like, oh, this is awesome. So I, um, I wrote down some stuff yesterday, and uh, I was thinking over, over the course of time, you know, when you talk about, you hear people, you hear different leaders talking about what works and, you know, what doesn't work and, and kind of what's what stalls us to a degree. And, and I'm going to talk about diamond and, you know, presidential and, and all of that. That's just because those are the ranks that people really kind of, kind of focus in on. But, um, but it's not just these ranks that it, that this pertains to. So a lot of times we, we wait to be diamond before we act as a diamond leader. So, the idea for this is that if you want to be diamond, then you need to act as a diamond leader today. You need to step into that today, whatever that looks like to you. And, um, and it really is a mindset kind of thing. So um, I really, for me, I really believe that I'm not presidential today because there's, there's a process and there's steps that I needed to take and I really uh, wasn't prepared to handle a, a presidential team I really wasn't it was more of uh, the it's more of that emotional that emotional connection and that emotional readiness are we ready to be that leader that will be able to handle the responsibilities of that rank and so that, uh, I wrote down this stuff today and, and it was during a training that it was at, they were actually talking about something else and it just was this analogy and it was, they were talking about kids and it, and it just kind of sparked it for me. And so I wrote down when your leader or you are elite, you're preparing them to be silver. When your leader is silver, you're preparing them to be diamond. And when your leader is diamond, you're preparing them to be presidential. And it's the same way for us as well. When we are, when we are one rank, we need to be preparing ourselves and building forward and moving forward to be able to be ready for that next rank when it happens. Because um, I have, it has happened to me, it has happened to a lot of leaders where you're working towards something and you're just kind of going along and you get in your back office and you start looking at your numbers and it's like, holy smoke, I am very close to this next drink. So um, 
a lot of times we're closer to our next goal or dream or vision than we actually realize that we are if we're not on purpose and preparing for that and really receiving that next goal or dream or vision. Does that make sense? Comments? <laughs> okay, so that leads us to the next thing that I wanna talk about, and that is, are you capable of handling big leaders? And, um, and that is not, I am not talking about tools, a system, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about your head and your heart. If a big leader came to you, would you in your heart with, with the confidence be able to say, I can do this. I am worthy to be able to have someone come onto my team that is going to rock the house. I am worthy, I know how to, to be able to take care of them. I know how to support them, I know how to serve them. And that doesn't mean that it's all gonna to rest on you. The idea is, is that you know and you're willing to be able to do whatever it takes to be able to help that big leader. So whether that would be reaching out to someone else and, and getting support to help them. If I had some big honking leader come to me right now, I could serve them, I could help them, and I, I would be able to do a pretty, a pretty good job with it. But I would probably be looking for some support to be able to just kind of give that reassurance that, you know, this is okay. I, I am more okay with it today than I was, would have been a couple of years ago. And so I guess the idea is no matter what rank you are right now, really set in your mind that you, that you are willing and able to be able to take care of anybody that comes your way, that joins your team. So that's what that is. And, and, um, and then it moves into the limiting beliefs. So what are your limiting beliefs? Do you, do you recognize any of the limiting beliefs? Do you guys have limiting beliefs? Only a couple. I'm impressed. I do. <laughs> Are you, do you feel comfortable sharing? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, I think some of my limiting beliefs is that it's, it's hard to build this business and that it's slow and it takes that people don't want to do the business. Those are some things that I think are kind of going on in the back of my head that, that hold me back from really going after recruiting and helping people get started. And I think I have some limiting beliefs around making too much money. I mean, I think, honestly, I think I have some some major fear about it. So I've been kind of becoming aware of it, working on it um, over the last year or so, but I, I'm afraid just, I think just journaling about it, writing about it, I think I'm just afraid it's going to affect my marriage and I'm afraid that it's going to make my kids spoiled and that it'll put an even bigger wedge between me and my family and just a lot of little things like that. So, um, yeah, those are some of my limiting beliefs. <laughs> and all that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I think that, I, and thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that. But I do want to tell you that um, I think that those are pretty common. I have those. And I sat in a training that um, was talking about limiting beliefs when it came to money. And it, and, and it was the fear of, well, if, you know, will my friends still like me? what will happen with my family, you know, different things like that. I think one of the most important things in that is the, is the awareness and be able to, you know, work through it little by little and not have the expectation that, that you're going to snap your fingers and all of that's going to, going to be gone, you know, because, because we're dealing with people and, and it's not all, it's not all you. And one of the things that really helps me is that um, the saying is that it's none of your business what other people think or feel. And, um, and it really isn't. And that's hard 
it's hard to to really kind of grasp that idea but um i have family that they have they have a hard time with money um not all of them there's certain certain family members and um certain groups of people it's uh it's noble to be poor you know there's just different things that come along with that and as as i moved forward in my blocks that that stopped me for a little bit it was hurtful because it was exciting for me because my goals are to be able to make as much money as i can so i can give it away and my family was part of that and i wanted to be able to just kind of hand out the money left and right and it was and i realized that the closer i got to being ready to do that they weren't ready to receive and i was like boy that's no fun that just kind of it kind of burst my bubble for a little bit and so it is a step by step kind of thing but i think the more we can pay attention to it is none of our business what they think and if they don't if they don't like what we're doing in that way if we are being above board above reproach and have an honest heart in what we're doing and they still have a problem with it it is their problem period so and you know that's it still is it still is a step by step process for each one of us it's our own journey how we decide we're going to how we're going to go through it but it is important to have that awareness so that's great awesome Deb, did you have something you wanted to say? Similar, I do find myself um, at times it's like, am I, you know, contacting the person, uh, following up? Like, are they going to think I'm bugging them, or am I going to come on too stronger, or you know, because I'm excited about it? I feel like when I start talking about it, it's like. <gasps> Okay, be quiet, especially with my family. It's like, okay, that's enough. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, yeah but that's, uh, that's where I go. Like, I have to make a, a do a follow up, and I'm like, okay, have I waited enough days? Yeah, that makes me out a little bit. Yeah, and that also is very, very common. I would be surprised if not almost every person has gone through that in the very beginning. And um, the, the number one thing that I will tell you as you, as you're, as you move forward in this is really um, less is better. Less words are better. You want, to, you, all, you want to say enough to give them the information that they need and make them want more. So that, that is key for that. They talk about fire hosing and, and all of that. But the other thing that um, when I was able to shift over and out of that, it was when I realized that I, I have something awesome. I have something that changes lives financially and for, the, for your whole life. Like there is, there is, there is your health and your, the emotional aspects of it. We're echoing. <laughs> Laura has joined us. Okay. She's got to unmute, unclick the sound. <laughs> nice one, Laura. No, I forgot what I was <laughs> saying. No, 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 no. So, um, so it really is that being certain that what you're doing is good. When we step into that mode of we are certain and we, um, we just know without a shadow of a doubt that this is good and obviously you are, you know, you're excited about that. And so uh, Sarah Robbins is a girl that I follow. She has, actually has a book. And one of the things that she talks about is that it's like being a waitress. So you're walking around with coffee and you're offering coffee to people. And some people will say yes, and some people will say no. And so you just, you know, keep, you just keep pouring the coffee. And another analogy is we've got the cookie. 
we have the cookie. We have like, we have the very best thing ever. It is the cat's meow. It is the best thing since sliced bread. This is a business model that will, that changes lives. It helps people make their dreams come true. And if someone tells you no, it's their loss, period. Their loss. <laughs> so don't, um, you, it's hard to say, I mean, a lot of people will say, well, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid what people are gonna say. Don't be afraid what people are gonna think. We're always gonna be concerned about that. But it really is if they feel your confidence and know that you that this is something that you really love, that you really believe in this, and then you act as if they've already said yes, then that increases your confidence even more. Then it's not a matter of you hounding them. You're just giving them what they need. And then they get to do with it what, that, what they choose. You're just offering, and it's up to them to say yes or no. Does that help? Yep. Thanks. And like Eric Worry says, I mean, no doesn't mean no. It just means not right now. Yep. Um, and a lot of those people, once you've planted those seeds, and once they see, um, I mean, a lot of people are really skeptical about network marketing in the first place. So once they see that you're, you've stuck with it, you've succeeded with it, your health is better because of it, you've helped other people with it, once they see that, they're going to come back around and start asking you and start wondering themselves, why didn't I do this when she first presented it to me? Mm -hmm. But I mean, we've had people six months or a year after we oh, first longer. told them yeah. about it that come back and say, I want to be a part of this. Yeah. So don't get discouraged by that first no, just keep planting the seeds, throw a little water on them here and there and wait for the harvest. Okay. <laughs> you're doing awesome. You're really doing awesome. I'm watching you. So you're doing fantastic. Thanks. Anybody else? And when Romy's watching you, she's watching you. <laughs> Iris, you scare them. <laughs> Okay, anybody else? Nobody else on that topic, that subject? Okay, the other, the other point is the final result is not a big enough check. Take the ceiling off the paycheck limit. What is the bigger picture? And so that is one thing that I think is, is um, I think it's important to be aware of that concept because We'll talk to people and, they'll, and, and it, it'll be a blanket statement. Well, I just want to make more money. You know, I want to make $500 more or, you know, different things like that. Well, why do you want, what will, what will it feel like when you make that much extra money? There is, it's, it's important to go so much deeper than those numbers and, um, and that, and I think when we, when we focus on the paycheck, and I've talked about this before, when we focus on the paycheck, then we start striving and we get out of serving mode. Then it is as we are, as we, as we start talking to people, all we're seeing is dollar signs. And that is not, our people are not dollar signs. Our people that we are, that we're coming in contact with are people that we can serve and help and love and welcome them into our community and into our family. And when we focus on that service mode, then that makes, that makes our job easier. And when we focus beyond the paycheck into the bigger picture, then that makes our passion stronger and it makes us, um, it makes our drive and our push stronger. And it gives us that, that stick to itiveness will, we just won't quit. No matter what, we're not gonna quit. Because we have a destiny, we have a purpose, we know where we're going, and no one is gonna stop us. It just doesn't matter, because we're gonna do it. And, and having a paycheck 
mentality in there is not going to be is not going to be the jet fuel that's going to get you to your destiny. How's that? Oh, thanks. He just oh, liked the jet fuel. Why are you cheering? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! No way, Kenzie's got it. Yeah. Okay, so how often do you hear yourself saying, I can't, I won't, I don't know how, etc.? So I was actually listening to a book the other day, and, it, and it's actually the book, You Are a Badass at Making Money. And um, so it kind of ties into this. It was really, a, um, it was, I really, I just really like that book. That book helped me to see that I had money blocks. I had worked through money blocks and it helped me to see that, oh boy, I still got some money blocks that I need to work on. So it was good. So one of the things that she said that um, I wanted to tie into that question is that when you have those, I can't, I won't, I don't know how, that kind of stuff, is that you have it in your head that you're going to say, clues are all around me, I know exactly what to do. And so that's where you can, um, like if you have a goal, so clues are all around me, I know exactly what to do to reach the rank of diamond. Clues are all around me, I know exactly what to do to enroll five people this month. Or clues are all around me, I know exactly what to do to serve my neighbor. Different things like that. So that was, that was really powerful for me. I actually have that written down um, in my, in, for my goals. So that was, I liked that. Anybody else like that? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so it says, I'm capable of giving everything a big producer needs. I will do what is needed to support them. So that goes along with the first, the first point of that. So we are, we're going to draw people to us that it's kind of like the, what I was talking about with the, with the time management part. We want to be very specific about the people that we want to draw to us. And if we're very specific about drawing a producer to us, then you know we are going to be able to take care of them because we've already envisioned it we've already it's already there it's in our head it's written down we you know we can feel it makes our heart pump different things like that but um but it's also in the same sense is that not everybody that we draw to us is necessarily going to be a big producer it could be someone that just really needs a solution for their health and they may never be interested in doing the business but boy are we going to be able to change their life because we're going to be able to help them with their health so i think it's really important to be able to, to make that be okay i think some people when they're new to the business um it's it's the idea of I want to grow, I want to rank advance, I want to be successful, I want to do this fast, I want a big team, I want to do this, I want to do this, and I only want to bring on builders. Well, your builders are really good, but your customer base is where the growth is going to be, where your retention rate is going to be where your focus if you're focusing on helping people get the cap off the bottle and use the oil and be educated in that your retention rate is going to be good and your fulfillment in your business is going to be through the roof because you're going to get those messages and those calls that we were talking about earlier it's very fulfilling to be able to have someone reach out to you and say oh my gosh you, you changed my life. And to me, it's awesome having builders and leaders and people that are excited and, and growing a team. That, that is awesome. But how heartwarming is it to know that you have changed someone's life so drastically 
just because you weren't afraid to reach out and offer a solution. <laughs> Laura says boom. <laughs> you can say boom loud. I didn't want to get annoying, but that really deserved a boom, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was saying it, Laura. You just couldn't hear me. <laughs> oh, I just realized it's ten two, boy. Okay, so I have um, I have a couple of like assignments just to to think about as you're moving forward for the week. So one is, what are three reasons that someone would want to join your team? What are three limiting beliefs that are holding you back? Do I need to repeat, slow down, keep going? Nobody's writing. <laughs> what was that first one? What are three reasons that someone would want to join your team? What are three limiting beliefs that are holding you back? How are you going to replace those limiting beliefs? So like I said, I think um, just recognizing your limiting beliefs, I mean, is a, is a start. I, like I said uh, before, it's, I didn't realize, I mean, I knew that I had worked through some of my, my money limiting beliefs. Um, and I didn't, and I don't know why, but I just didn't think about it again. But then when I, when I listened to that book, then it came back around and I realized that there was some things that was, that were probably holding me back. And, uh, so I think that it's, yes, how, we, how will you replace your limiting beliefs? So I think it's important to just stay open and be in that learning, that learning phase and just be very, very intuitive to what is happening with you. So if it feels like all of a sudden uh, you're striving or you're blocked or you're not, you know, you're not moving forward or you're just kind of trudging through the mud, then sometimes it, it pays to just step back for a minute and say, okay, so what's happening? Do I need to, do I need more rest? Do I need to look at my diet? Do I need to look at some different oil protocols? Um, do I need to look to see if I've got some belief there? Am I worthy to move forward? Do I deserve success? Different things like that. So it's just a matter of being aware. I just Um, let's see. Did everybody get that written down? Sorry, my phone's buzzing and now I'm distracted. Thanks, Lataren. <laughs> I'm like, she is, she's right there. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's on the call. She's texting me. Is something wrong? <laughs> Um. Sorry, I had an idea while you were talking, and I had to send it to you while I was thinking about it. Oh, okay. Before I forgot. Okay. <laughs> that gave me a great idea. Okay. Okay, we're coming on to an hour, so I'll try and hurry up and get through this. Okay, so um, the other one is, what do you want your team to see in you? Three things. So what kind of a what kind of a leader do you want to be? What do you want your team to say about you? I mean, it really is what do you what do you want to um, 
I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then um, follow up with your enrollment. So the people that, that you have enrolled, that's the opportunity to get in there and just be really on purpose and building that community and that family and really what you learn, what you're walking through, what you're learning, even your problems. Like the, some of the struggles, like I am not, uh, I'm very open about sharing if I have struggled with something. We all make mistakes when we're building our business. And I think that if we portray that everything is peaches and cream and rosy and yay, then I think it's, um, I think it's not realistic. I think that it, it hurts your team to not know that you have had struggles. So that doesn't mean, so I, I totally believe in the hierarchy and the, um, and the authority role. Never, um, never go down to your downline when you, have, when you have a problem, you wanna always go to your upline. And um, never talk about one of your other leaders in a negative light with a cross-line leader. That is taboo. Never, never do that. Ever, 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 ever. If I hear about that stuff, it does not make me happy. Um, all good stuff goes down, and if you, str if you have the bad stuff, goes up. However, after you've gone through your bad stuff, then that's your opportunity to say, look, this is what happened to me. Boy, I, I just really struggled with this, but this is what I did. So you never want to pull your team into your muck. You want to always make it be a, a learning, a teaching opportunity. Help them to see that, yeah, you have problems, but you come out of it. We always come out of it. It's always going to get better. If it's, it just is. It's always going to get better till you die. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the last one is just no excuses. I choose more. It's just, it just is. No excuses. If you want to be successful, if you want to change lives, if you want to serve people, there is just no opportunity for excuses. You're just, we just do whatever we have to do to make it happen. And if we're not willing to do what we have to do to make it happen, then that's when it's time to step back and say, okay, what's going on? Are my dreams not big enough? Do I have something holding me back? What's, what's happening? So um, I'm going to share one story. It was actually a realization that I had um, this morning, actually, when I was walking. I listened to Tony Robbins' um, book. What was that book? I'm actually second time around. It's very short. It's super easy to listen to, and it's very motivating as um, Awaken the Giant Within. So one of the things that he talks about is making changes and it's audible. So audible is way better for me, just in case you're not a reader. Audible is super good, Lateran. <laughs> um, so he talks about as we're making changes, whether it's, you know, health changes or, um, business changes or something like that. We want to relate. We always want to have something that's going to solidify that belief or to, um, to have something that's going to make that change be strong. And, um, oh, the other one uh, Laura is recommending is the outward mindset by, oh, the Arbinger Institute. The outward mindset, seeing beyond ourselves. That looks good. <laughs> um, and then, and then also, when we're struggling with something, there is that's where it's where you look back and try and figure out, you know, 
what happened, what happened to make it be where I accepted that or um, so I'm totally slaughtering this thing. So my analogy in this is that I have um, a huge issue with speaking in front of people, huge issue. And um, so while he was talking about this and he was talking about how our experiences um, we have experiences that kind of solidify our a fear or something like that. Well, what I realized is that when I was in fifth grade, my mom loves to play the piano and she loves to sing and and all of that. So she decided that she was gonna and she was gonna sign both of us up to, for a talent contest. Well, I'm in fifth grade and. Um, so this is nothing against my mom, just so you know, this is nothing against in that way, nothing negative in that regard. Um, it just helped me to realize I can, when he was talking, I, I, it immediately took me back to standing on that stage, singing Delta Dawn, so scared. I was so scared. Like, and I could sing Delta Dawn, at the top of my lungs in the back of the car. No worries whatsoever, no problem. Standing up in front of people, I thought I was gonna wet my pants. And so I really think that, it's, that that's where kind of the root of the problem was, and that's what he talks about, is that there's something that happens that, that does that trigger, and so it's time when you recognize that, to do something else to bring about the positive and to rewrite, kind of rewrite that, that history. So recognizing negative stuff that happens when we're children doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna lay blame on anyone because we're still responsible for our actions. We are always responsible for our actions, what we do with it as we grow older. And so that is, it's, that's just the way it is. So it is, it really is a matter of just being aware. If we've got bad stuff, if we've got good stuff, everything makes us the person that we are today. And we get to choose whether we're gonna make that be good or whether it's gonna hold us down. We can be a victim or we can be a victor. And I am a conqueror. That's what I got. Anybody have anything? Now can we clap real loud? <laughs> <laughs> Comments? Questions? Oh my goodness. Yeah, Kenzie, unmute everybody. <laughs> Share some. Everybody's unmuted. Uh, that was great. Thank you, Romy. That was awesome. Thanks. <laughs> all I can do is grin. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I always um, said the things that I've gone through, if I could use them to help somebody else, then I didn't feel resentful for having been through them. And I always have felt like they were stepping stones to rise above. And I look back over the years and I see how all those tough places and struggles have brought qualities that I use today in very, a lot of aspects of my life. And it allows me to reach a lot of different people because I do have that compassion and understanding and they know that's genuine. Mm -hmm. I agree. I figure I've always said, Lord, if, if I can use it to help somebody else, then I won't feel like it's been wasted because I went through the struggle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. <clears throat> Echoing. I, 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 have, I have the same belief in that. I just had Whoa. <clears throat> I had a, I had a mute, Laura. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wouldn't, 
I've had bad stuff happen, but I would not go back and change really anything because it, it really is what makes me who I am, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. Now so, I feel the dawn stuck in my head. <laughs> oh, let's sing in chorus. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so Amy says, you can't talk out loud. Everyone is sleeping. I wanted to say I recently learned that the universe only wants to say yes. So think about and ask for what you actually desire. It's why negativity doesn't serve us. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I agree. And remind me, Amy, I'll send you a book that I'm reading and a course. I actually was going to bring it with, and I was like, oh, no, they won't like this. But it's about kinesiology, about the guy that, um, that uh, developed kinesiology and goes along with, with what you're talking about, and, but even more so. I, I have to read it for a course that I'm taking, and I'm doing Audible, and Lord have mercy. It's so hard. It's like, I'm doing this subconscious learning. So I'm listening to it while I'm like, I'm hoping that I learn it while I'm sleeping because it's hard. <laughs> so. All right. You can stop the recording, please, Ken.